Hi, hello, happy Thursday, everyone. Um, hope you're joining me here today or whenever it works for you guys to watch this video. Um, here with a Thursday children's message for you guys. So I'm dressed a little bit different today than I normally am. Um, I have my, my beads and I have my fancy scarf and my kind of fringy shawl on. So I will explain a little bit later why I am dressed this way. But <clears throat> first I want us to open with a prayer. It's gonna be a really simple prayer, a repeat after me prayer. So um, repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your peace. Help me to feel your peace when everything feels so unpeaceful. Amen. All right. So on Tuesday, we read a story from our Spark Story Bible. And it was about Jesus visiting the disciples um, after his resurrection. And we read it out of the Spark Bible. Now today we're going to read a Bible verse that's out of our regular Bible um, about that story. So part of that story. So if you remember, if you weren't here Tuesday, just to let you know, you know, Jesus came, he visited the disciples. He stood among them in a room where the door was locked. He sort of appeared to them and they believed it was him after seeing his wounds. And um, he said some things to them and Thomas wasn't there. I don't know what Thomas was doing, but he wasn't there. And Jesus actually had to come back the next week so that Thomas could believe, so that Thomas could see him as well. So that's the whole story. That is the gospel lesson for this Sunday as well. And we're just gonna read a little bit of that story of when Jesus first appears to the disciples. Um, so if you have your Bible, um, just as a reminder, good way to find the Gospels in the New Testament is open your Bible halfway to find the Psalms and then take that other half and open that about halfway and you're hopefully in Matthew. And the Gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I've said that before, so just remember that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so John is the fourth gospel. So we'll need to go a little past Matthew. We'll have to flip a little ways to get to John. So if you find John, we're looking at John chapter 20. Just a moment to maybe find that. John chapter 20. And we're just going to read verses 19 to 21 through 21. You can just listen along if you don't have your Bible with you. That is totally fine. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. So we get a glimpse into some of the things that Jesus said. They probably talked about a lot of things. Um, but in this chapter of John, we hear that he has said, peace be with you. He says it twice to them. And we say it to each other. I wonder if you guys can think of the time that we say it to each other in church. When we were able to gather um, with, the, with our congregation, when did we say peace be with you? Think about that. Um, and it was during our greeting, during the sharing of the peace, which is kind of towards the beginning of the service. And everybody gets up and shakes hands and says hello and says good morning and says peace be with you. Um, it's one of my favorite parts of the church service. And I think a lot of you guys like it too. I, I, I see all the smiling faces getting up and shaking hands with everybody. Um, and it's definitely something that I miss, that I miss a whole lot, um, is being able to share the peace with everyone. Um, so, you know, I, this story and the fact that Jesus tells the disciples, peace be with you twice, and the fact that it's a really important part of our worship service to share the peace with each other, really got me thinking 
what, what does that mean anyway? What are we really saying to each other? What was Jesus really saying to the disciples when he said that? So it got me thinking. And one of the reasons I'm kind of dressed up today, so I'll tell you, is, you know, I, I'm dressed a little bit like somebody might have dressed in the 60s or 70s um, at a time when the word peace was used a whole lot. So we think of, so sometimes when we think of the word peace, we think of peace, man, peace be with you. Um, and that time, I was born in the 70s. Some of your grandparents may have been, may have grown up in the 70s or been older in the 70s. Um, so they might remember the 70s and kind of remember that time, or maybe you've heard about that time, or you've seen people dress up like this. Um, and people use that term a lot, peace, peace. But I'm not sure that that's the kind of peace that Jesus was really talking about. Um, I think, you know, that kind of peace was more about um, everything being fine and love and happiness and everything's perfect and tranquil and there's no problems. And I don't think that Jesus is talking about there being no problems. So let me think some more. Well, what are we talking? What kind of peace are we talking about then? And sometimes maybe when you guys have had to learn a new word and look it up in the dictionary, um, you've also seen what is opposite of that word. Because sometimes in the dictionary, they'll tell you, this is the opposite of that word. And that helps you maybe understand the word a little bit better. So I got to thinking, well, what's opposite of peace? And you guys know about opposites. Um, you know, cold is opposite of heat. Day is opposite of night, fast opposite of slow. So you get opposites, you know. And um, so what is the opposite of peace? Well, I know that when I'm not feeling peaceful, when I'm unpeaceful, I feel unsure. I feel uneasy. I feel anxious and worried and fearful. But when I do feel at peace, Things make sense to me. And people that I love are safe, like I know they're safe. And I know what to expect. Those are all things that when I'm at peace, those are things that I'm experiencing. So right now, we are really living in some unpeaceful times. We're not at war, but inside of us, everyone is feeling unsure, unsafe anxious, worried, not knowing what to expect, not knowing what's coming next. We're feeling pretty unpeaceful right now. And I really believe the disciples felt the same exact way after Jesus's resurrection. And maybe even when he appeared to them, they still felt that way. They didn't know what to expect. They were fearful, uneasy, unsure. And Jesus comes to them, and twice he offers them peace. He says, peace be with you. So I think he's telling them that they can be sure, that they need not fear, that they know they're loved, and that he will be with them, and that he will give them what they need. So when we have all shared the peace at church, we're also sharing that with each other. It's not just saying good morning and sharing the, and saying peace be with you and not having it mean anything. We're also letting people in our church know you need not fear. You are loved. You can be sure. So this Sunday, I will be leading a short children's message during the worship service. So myself and pastor and Jackie will be on for our worship service on Sunday. And I'll be doing a short children's message to continue looking at this story a little bit. Um, this is the gospel message for this Sunday. And so we'll, we'll hear about that story again. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about how trust shows up in all of this. I'll also be sharing a link to a family Sunday school lesson that is being put on by Spark House. Um, they're gonna be doing these once a week. They're awesome short little videos with 
a lesson and music and activities that you can do at home. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so this is an opportunity for you as a family on Sunday morning, maybe after you watch the worship service to do a little Sunday school lesson. And that link will be on our regular church Facebook page. It'll be on the children, youth and family page. And please let me know if those are not options for you guys. Um, email me and I will be happy to email you the link um, so that you can access that family Sunday school. And in that video, they're gonna sing a song called Peace Like, I've Got Peace Like a River. And we've sung this maybe before you, maybe you've heard the song before, maybe you haven't. <coughs> but we're gonna sing it today so that if you do the Sunday school lesson on Sunday, you'll know the song and you can sing right along with it. So we are gonna start off, it'll just be a repeat after me and then we'll sing it all together again. All right. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. And we'll do some actions when we sing that all together. Peace like a river, peace like a river in my soul, okay? So sing along with me. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. So sing that song as you're going about today. And I hope that you'll use the Sunday school lesson on Sunday and join us for worship. Um, I hope that your family is doing well and that you are all doing well. I miss you so much. But I also feel peace. I feel peace that I know I will see you again. And I know that God is with us, no matter what happens. So I hope you find some peace as well in this very unpeaceful time. Love you all. And we'll see you Sunday. Bye-bye.